Welcome to Jamaica Magazine, I'm Adrian Atkinson. With objectives aimed at developing, designing, coordinating and conducting training programs, the Justice Training Institute is the ideal place if you would like to become Justices of the Peace, Chief Justices, Judges and Magistrates. This week on Issues and Answers, we will be discussing the roles and responsibilities of Justices of the Peace in Jamaica, and later we'll provide you with need-to-know information when planning for your retirement. Stay tuned as the magazine unfolds. Jamaica comes alive for Jamaica 55. The Jamaica Information Service is inviting primary, secondary, and tertiary students to catch the vibes and join in the celebration by participating in this year's staging of the JIS Heritage Competition. Primary and prep school children, ages 9 to 12, enter the essay competition and tell us how you would want to see Jamaica in 55 years. High schoolers, enter the poster competition. Show us your artistic interpretations of Jamaica throughout her 55 years in a poster titled Jamaica 55. Posters may be designed digitally or illustrated. Zoom, click, snap. Yes, tertiary students, the photo competition is back. Capture an image that best represents Jamaica 55. For more information on the competition rules and how to submit entries, visit the JIS website at www.jis.gov.jm. You may also send an email to heritageessay at jis.gov.jm, heritageposter at jis.gov.jm, or heritagephoto at jis.gov.jm, or call us at 926-3590-4. The deadline for all entries is October 31, 2017. So ready, set, go for prizes galore. JIS Heritage Competition 2017, celebrating Jamaica 55. Justice Training Institute's Director and Principal, Mrs. Karen Campbell Basco, joins us next on Issues and Answers. She's telling us more on how they have been training JPs and improving their job performances. <music> Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. Today we are talking justice, uh, more particularly the role of the justice of the peace. And we will look at uh, the role of the JPs in the zones of special operations. We have with us the director and principal of the Justice Training Institute, Karen Campbell Basco, and she will be shedding light on these issues for us. We thank you for your company. Good to have you on the um, uh, program, uh, Karen. Thank you for having me. We want to start by talking about the, the role of the Justice Training Institute. The Justice Training Institute is the training arm of the Ministry of Justice, and we're charged with the responsibility of providing training for members within the justice system, as well as members within the private sector who may interact with the justice system. Mm -hmm. And primarily what we want to achieve is to improve the performance of the members within the justice system so as to enable our citizens to have good service. Tell us about the work you've been doing with, 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 with the JPs. Part of our responsibility is to ensure that our justices of the peace are trained and equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge to carry out their duties. So we start our JPs with what we refer to as qualifying training. So an individual has been approved to serve as a JP. Mm -hmm. By law, they are required to complete mandatory hours of training before they are commissioned as a justice. So we, our first interaction with an individual is through the qualifying training. Thereafter, we'll call our JPs back in through the Custis' office to complete training in other areas. For example, they serve on panels within the courts, the children's court, mm -hmm. the drug treatment panel, they serve on the spirit license panel. They also serve in the petty sessions court. So we provide training for these individuals before they sit on these panels and within the court. We also now have expanded our training to include mediation, restorative justice, and other areas uh, for, of training for the justices of the I peace. See. So there's an expanded role of the JP. It's not just signing documents yes. and identifying persons. Gone are the days where we require our JPs to merely authenticate our witness documents. Our JPs have always been serving as peacemakers within our communities. Yes. We want to further equip them to assist our citizens by allowing them to gain knowledge of how to conduct mediation sessions, how to conduct restorative justice conferencing, and this is specialized training being delivered by experts within the field. 
So at the end of a mediation training, for example, and they would complete theory and practical training in mediation, the hope is that they, the individuals will be assessed as competent and become certified mediators who can now conduct mediation sessions, whether through the court system or within the communities for our citizens. So there's a program now to ensure that all our JPs are trained in mediation and dispute resolution? Well, to matters. start, we are specifically identifying persons who, one, have an interest to serve in okay. that area, and two, where we recognize that they will do well in such an area, because there may be some JPs who may not, not have, have interest, interest there. For the year, we want to train 500 justices of the peace in mediation, oh. at least another 1,000 to have a sensitization in restorative justice, and there are several other areas that we want to have the number of JPs trained. And we'll continue the program in successive years to ensure that a large number of JPs are available to offer these services across the island. How has the, the government been doing in terms of recruiting uh, JPs, what are the figures in terms of the, the, the movement of the number of persons uh, who have been appointed yes. uh, Over the JPs. last year and a half, we've seen an increase in the number of persons that, one, have shown an interest in becoming a JP, and two, that have been commissioned as a Justice of the Peace. Since February 2017, over 400 new individuals have been commissioned to serve as a Justice of the Peace. Okay. Already we have over 250 JPs in training for the parish of St. Catherine alone. And we're continuing with training for our Kingston. We have training lined up for St. Thomas mm -hmm. and for St. Andrew. Mm -hmm. So the numbers are increasing. We were in a year and a half ago, we were at about 6,200 JPs. We have over 7,000 JPs now serving. Oh, so quite a, a significant A significant um, increase. And we will continue to grow those numbers. We want each citizen to be able to identify a JP as soon as the services are required. Yes. Our JPs are important to us. They serve a critical role within the justice system. And if our citizens are not able to access the services, then it may cause a breakdown within the justice system yes. and we just can't afford mm. that. Some people um, complain that they might know a JP, but not someone <coughs> in uh, their area. And, and sometimes there's that requirement that the JP must be from their community or from um, their parish. Yes. Is, is, is the government looking into this? And Yes, uh, there are a few areas that we are aware that the additional JPs are required. And we are focusing on those areas with the assistance of the Custos to identify res responsible persons to serve as JPs. Currently, JPs are commissioned to serve within a parish. Mm -hmm. What we want to do with impending amendment of the legislation is to have the JPs serve for the island of Jamaica. Oh, that would be appreciated by many. Yes. While the JPs, however, serve for a parish, there are certain services that they can offer regardless of the parish that the individual is residing in. For example, to provide a reference for an individual, the JP need not reside in the parish that the citizen is residing in. Okay. Usually for a reference, for example, it requires that the JP knows the individual for a certain number of years. Where, however, there are court forms, court documents that needs to be signed, there may be stipulations that it must be signed by a JP within a certain parish. But apart from the court documents, yes. the individual, once he knows a JP, um, if he knows a JP from Westmoreland, yes. um, that person can, 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 can sign for him? Generally, Even. yes. Mm -hmm. you, however, we, the, the type of document that is really required determines which JP is the most appropriate to complete that, that documentation. Yes. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we will talk uh, specifically about the zones of special operations and the role of the JPs in those zones. Have you been a victim of sexual assault? Have you been raped? It doesn't matter if you're a boy, girl, man or woman. There's a team of personnel willing and capable to assist you on the path to justice. The Victim Services Division. They provide support of all kinds, such as free, confidential counseling and assistance to attend court. You may not forget the ordeal, but the healing process will be easier. In any one year, more than 10,000 people get assistance. Don't hang your head in shame. Being a victim of a sex crime is not your fault. Contact the Victim Services Division 
They're based at 47E Old Hope Road, Kingston 5. Welcome back. We're speaking to Karen Campbell Basco, and she's a director and principal of the Justice Training Institute. We've been talking about the expanded role of the JPs. They are not just persons to sign um, documents and to identify you. They can help you in terms of, of mediation, in terms of conflict uh, resolution, and they'll play a critical role in the zones of special operations. And Karen, I, I see from the law that anyone who is detained or arrested um, shall, uh, quote, immediately be told of the reason for his arrest or detention and forthwith brought before a justice of the peace who shall determine whether or not there are reasonable grounds for the arrest or detention. So that while the law provides for what some would call preventative detention, it is not that the powers are vested in the security forces, but the, the, the JP um, will certify that the person really ought to be um, so detained. And I, I read again, if the JP is not satisfied that the arrest or detention is justified, uh, quote, he shall order that that person be released forthwith. That's an important role <laughs> of the JPs. It is. And a read of the, the law will show that the lawmakers were sure to, 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 to enact legislation that allows for the protection of the human rights of citizens, yes. should and if a zone is, is called. The JPs already play a similar role within the, the island uh -huh. because they also assist in determining matters relating to bail for certain offenses. Yes. So we are now... The, through the legislation, the JPs now have a role, and particularly lay magistrates. These are persons that serve within the Petty Sessions Court. Mm -hmm. Lay magistrates are also persons who would have had special training from the Justice Training Institute, treating with how to deal with matters that may come before them in court, including matters of bail. Mm -hmm. And when, the, when a zone is declared, the JP will be, JPs will be rostered and will be available to come within the zones through proper protocols and will be able to assess the situation. They'll be provided with the relevant information that they will use to determine whether the, in the, the citizen was detained mm. uh, reasonably. And then a determination is made because the rights of our citizens are important and mm. they must be protected. Yes. So that's another critical role that our justices of the peace will be asked to play. Yes. And the, the, the JPs would have already been trained in human rights issues, they would yes. have been sensitized. They would have been. The qualifying training program that we have uh, introduces them to human rights and the rights of citizens in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The specialized trainings also, and we're going to be having even more specialized training treating further with the zone of special operations to give them first-hand sensitization yes. on what the law requires generally and what is expected of them specifically within a zone. Mm -hmm. And you expect that there will be enough uh, JPs for the zones? There will be. Uh, when the legislation was first enacted, and even just before enactment, there were some justices that expressed some amount of uh, fear and doubt. Yes, the yes. Minister of Justice, however, has been moving across the island and he has been speaking with these justices. And I have had from feedback from the justices themselves oh. that having heard from the minister and having gone through the legislation and indications that their, their lives will also be protected, the, the fears have been allayed and we have even more persons offering themselves to serve within the zones if required. So there, there has been that experience where there. people are now... They are volunteering their services. Yes, their, their, we their have services. JPs that have volunteered to serve. Initially, they may not have been comfortable. Mm -hmm. But those fears have the, been allayed largely. Those fears have been allayed, allayed largely, and more persons have come on board and offered themselves to serve, to be rostered, to serve within a zone. Yeah. And a, a JP would not necessarily have to be operating within a particular zone, residing within a particular zone, to be assigned. That is true. They need not be. Why the legislation is not clear on that, mm -hmm. the, the, how, how the operations will go, 
will be determined once we start to use the legislation, right. which is which which happens with any law mm -hmm. that is new. And and there's no restriction by law mm -hmm. that says that the JP has to be from that parish. Precisely. So that it, in, in the case where there is an adequate number of JPs right. in a particular area, they can move government into would be, other would be free, areas. Yeah, yes. would be free to, to, to send persons them to assist. in that um, area. That is correct. I want to talk about the, the role of the, the justice training centers. Because the, uh, under the institute, there are uh, centers. Are, uh, certainly, there is a plan yes. to have a number of centers yes. in various parishes. Right. Let's talk about. The Minister of Justice, as we expand the roles of the Justices of the Peace, must also expand the infrastructure to allow the citizens to be able to interact with the JPs and to access these services. So, for the across the fourteen parishes, the Minister of Justice will be in ha, will will have a justice centre. Um, set up in each parish oh. to offer services such as mediation, restorative justice, and to allow citizens to interact with the ministry and with the custos and with the justices of the peace. Already we've opened a justice centre in the parish of St. Anne, and there are plans to have at least five more open before the end of the year, and the additional amounts to total 14 to be opened by next year, 2018. Mm -hmm. And these justice centers are important. We have found that while there are services available currently under the Ministry of Justice and other ministries that allow the, serve the individuals to interact with the justice system, there is need for more. And the justice centers will provide that. So the work of the justice center will um, uh, certainly provide the means through which this expanded role of, of the JPs um, is facilitated. Yes. Definitely. The roles and functions of the JPs are, are critical in the protection of human rights in providing the safeguards that are needed, uh, more particularly in the zones of special operations. Our guest has been the director principal of the Justice Training Institute, Karen Campbell Basco. We thank you for your company on Issues and Answers next week. I'll be back until then. Ian Bourne wishing you a pleasant day. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. Get active, eat healthy. You can protect yourself from high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, certain cancer diseases, and more. The moment you start working, you should start planning for your retirement. If you haven't started yet, it is not too late. Watch this next feature to find out more and how you can effectively plan for your future. Imagine a life fully devoted to a profession. Toiling through the sweltering heat or hard at work in an office, racking up awards and earning a low, moderate or really generous salary along the way. But years later, when seniority dictates that a day-to-day -day job is no longer feasible, you are left bereft of funds. One could find themselves um, in serious deficit. Retirement becomes fiscally strained and you are no longer able to maintain a quality standard of living. Before that happens, apply the every mickle muckle technique. Plan for your retirement before it's too late. Everyone needs some form of financial security when they retire. The planning process starts with the basic principle of financial planning, a budget. Look at your income and expenditure and make spending cuts where applicable. Once you've identified the amount of money to go towards your retirement, invest it in an approved pension scheme that will guarantee an adequate rate of return. In terms of the accrual on the investment and of course something that will ensure that you have a guaranteed income at the point of retirement. 
Now, if you work with a company that makes it mandatory for employees to make pension payments to an approved retirement scheme, 5% of your gross monthly salary will likely go towards your pension. What that means is that the contribution is applied directly to the pension account before taxes are taken. That allows your contribution to, more, to be a more efficient contribution for the purposes of your retirement. The money is not kept in the employer's account. Instead, it goes directly to a pension fund supervised by a licensed financial institution. If it is though that you're planning to properly prepare, a 5% contribution is not likely to give you or generate the sort of income that you will need or sufficient enough to take care of those retirement needs let's say five years, ten years into the retirement. So the idea is to gradually increase the amount you contribute over a period of time. Be aware though that you can only contribute as much as 20% of your gross monthly income. Employees can access their company's contribution to the pension plan after a specific number of years called the vesting period. If your employer doesn't have a set pension fund or if you're a self-employed person, you can still visit a financial institution and join an approved pension fund and you will still get the tax-free benefit. This individual retirement account, however, is only available to persons who are not already a part of an approved pension scheme. Only one pension or retirement fund is permitted under the law. Other forms of investments, stocks, mutual funds, bonds, fixed deposit accounts, etc. can also be used to shore up your retirement reserves. Whichever route you choose, a financial advisor is recommended. An advisor, for example, you know, can look at your arrangement and say, listen, based on your current level of contributions and based on where you're projected to be, assuming your retirement occurs in 10 or 15 years, we may need to ask you to um, increase your premiums to make sure there's no shortfall. Now some people believe they are too young to start planning for the period when they will not be able to work. That mindset needs to change. Consider this scenario. There are two individuals, both investing $10,000 each monthly, but one started to make the contribution at age 30 and the other started at age 40. The individual that starts at age 30, at his point of retirement, can expect uh, a projected value of on his retirement account of about 46 million. For somebody who started 10 years later, so instead of 30, now 40, their accumulated value is 13 million. That's a $33 million difference. When it comes to retirement, it costs to wait. By way of an earlier start, that individual can expect to have a higher percentage of his final income replaced at the point of retirement. The government has also taken steps to ensure that persons have some form of income when they retire. This is being manifested through the National Insurance Scheme, NIS, a 2.5% mandatory contribution by both the employer and employee. 2% of the contribution goes towards the NIS and the remainder to the National Health Fund, NHF. There are several benefits to the NIS. A funeral grant, widow's benefit, and orphan's benefit are among them. But when it comes to monthly pension payments, the NIS is deemed the great equalizer. So if you are not making your NIS payments, a good time to start is now. You can register with any NIS office in your area. And even if you contribute to the NIS, you're always advised to look at other forms of retirement benefits. Real estate is a good investment. Take the business of retirement um, very seriously. So start early is my recommendation. Um, make sure that in, uh, once you've started that you, that, you, that you stick to it. Conjunctivitis, otherwise known as pink eye, is caused by viruses which enter the eye through contaminated surfaces, such as your hand, wash rags, cosmetics, handkerchiefs, contact lenses, and other personal items. Symptoms include redness, watery, itchy, and or burning eyes, as well as hypersensitivity to light and grainy feeling in the eyes. To prevent pink eye infection, do not share makeup, eye drops, wash rags, towels, or pillowcases. Also, avoid coming into contact with persons with pink eye. 
If you experience symptoms of pink eye, wash your hands with soap and water regularly. Avoid rubbing the eyes and see your doctor. Do not attend school, work or other crowded places until the infection clears up. For more information, visit the Ministry of Health website, moh.gov.jm. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. So after a week of classes, you've caught up with your friends and discussed the summer happenings. But now you're probably wondering what you can do to pass the time at school when you're not studying. How about getting involved in an extracurricular activity? You can join a sport team. 4-H club, drama or dance club, choir, even the student council. So many choices. It may seem overwhelming, but getting involved in new activities with new people is a fun way to challenge yourself. It also teaches life lessons, like how to work together by remembering that there is no I in team. The activities you participate in now can help you earn scholarships and open up windows of opportunity for you to further your abilities. It also adds color to your university and job applications as it shows how rounded you are as an individual. Specific activities can help with specific goals. Develop your skills for the future. Extracurricular bringing hope to Jamaica's youth. Protect Jamaica, plant your grass. Help us become more resilient to climate change impacts. Protect Jamaica, plant a tree. It improves the island's national biodiversity. Trees may be fruit, ornamental, or timber, but must be native or suitable to the area's natural landscape. Join the Jamaica Million Tree Campaign and help to plant one million trees by June 30, 2019. This is a call to action by the National Environment and Planning Agency. I hope you found our program informative. Send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Stay informed on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.